Resolve is an excellent tool to work in, but if you ever take a look at all the menus, and there's a lot of them, it can be pretty daunting. So if you're new to Resolve, I'm gonna point you to a couple of the settings that I change right away, and I'll show you what they do. So when you open Resolve, you're gonna see your list of projects. If you right click, it doesn't matter, matter where, you can go down and you can check dynamic project switching. You can open one up, and what that allows you to do is to have multiple projects open at the same time and switch between them from either this window or the drop down window at the top, so in this case, I'll just open this one. Now if I go up here, I can actually switch between them from this little drop down window at the top. And it's a little cumbersome since you have to switch manually between each to a whole new set of windows, but on the flip side, it's cleaner than Premiere, which can kind of bury you in a lot of panels and bins when you have a lot of projects open. The next one is usually on by default, but in case it isn't, you should go up to Preferences, User, Project Save and Load, and make sure Live Save is checked on. What that does is that basically every time you make a change, Resolve will save your project. You can also set up regular backups here if you'd like, so even if it crashes, you'll barely lose any work. No matter what app I'm using, I always like to turn on Show Duplicate Frames. And to do that, we're gonna go up to View and scroll all the way down to Show Duplicate Frames. And what that does, if I duplicate this, is it puts a line every time that the frame is used somewhere else in the timeline. So you can see because I duplicated this, it's telling me, hey, you used it twice. This is super helpful to make sure you don't accidentally use a piece of media twice when you didn't mean to. Now you might not need this, but if you have assets that you use regularly, you should turn on power bins. Again, you go up to view and you scroll all the way down to show power bins. And now you'll see in the master folder, a new master folder, in the media pool. And any media that you drag into a power bin will then always be there anytime you start a brand new project, as long as your projects are in the same database. So I already have this set up. I have my YouTube graphics and music that I use in there for almost every video. So if you're producing content for your own channel or you have repeat clients using the same media all the time, this will save you the time of finding the media and re-importing that stuff over and over and over again. Okay, let's move on to the color page. Let's go into our settings, general options. I'm gonna turn off use local version for new clips in timeline. With that turned off, by default, Resolve will set your clips to use remote grades, which means that instances of the same clip in the timeline will share the same grade and every instance will update whenever you make a change. So this is indicated by the little red arrow icon in the corner of the clips. As you can see, this is the same clip. It means the grades are connected. If you make a dramatic change, beautiful, you can see it updated over there. This is really great for interviews or when using different parts of a long clip throughout your timeline. So you don't have to apply the grade across the clips manually and then reapply everywhere if you decide to make a change. If you do need to give one clip a new grade without affecting the others, you can create a new version with command Y, and then you can make changes as needed just to that one, or you could switch it back to using a local version of the grade. Another setting I like to change in those general option settings is luminance mixer defaults to zero. Now what this does is it allows me to tweak the red, green, and blue channels independently without the other channels compensating. Let me show you what I mean. This is really handy for shot balancing. So if I'm looking at this, I can see the reds maybe are a little lifted in the shadows. With Luminance Mixer down here turned to zero, I can actually just move the red channel around on its own. Whereas if that's set to 100, if I move the red channel, you can see the green and blue channels are also moving in tandem with it. I basically never want this to happen. I'd rather just be in control of my image and it makes it way easier to balance images if I don't have the other channels moving at the same time. Okay, my last setting is on the export page. I have this project prepped for export, but if I go up to the render queue and I hit the three dots in the corner and I click show all projects, you can actually see every project that I have currently queued up in the render queue across all of my projects. You might not need this all the time, but it pairs nicely if you're using that dynamic project switching to jump between multiple projects and you're ready to render a bunch of timelines out all at once. I hope you found some of these tips useful. I, they certainly help me in my workflow. And of course, I have tons of useful tips over on my channel. So give some of my other videos a watch. And if you want to do a deeper dive into Resolve, I'm actually working on a video right now about switching from Premiere Pro to DaVinci Resolve and kind of how you can navigate that. So definitely get subscribed and stay tuned for that video. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.